Good evening and praise the Lord. Uh, we want to take this opportunity to thank God who has remained faithful to us during this difficult time. Uh, we understand it is difficult and people are struggling, but we want to thank God who has uh, kept us safe. And uh, we want to welcome you to ACK St. Mark's Westlands, where we want to present to you a seminar. And this seminar is about a uh, priest pastoral voice, because we know each and every one of us, we are going through a tough uh, situation, may it be children, parents, teenagers, we are all struggling in uh, one way or the other. And th in this particular time, we want to hear uh, from a priest. And this priest we want to present to you is also the host. He is the vicar of ACK St. Mark's Westlands, and he's also the archdeacon of this area, the venerable canon Joshua Omungo, who will be sharing more about holding family together during this difficult time. And therefore, it's our prayer that this session will be helpful to each and every one of us, and we thank God for the opportunity. So welcome and enjoy listening. I welcome you to this talk, a parental talk that uh, aims to strengthen our families as we go through these very, very difficult uh, COVID times. And the title of the talk today is Holding the Family Together When the World is Falling Apart. COVID has disrupted life in general and it has caused so much pain and, uh, and difficulty to many people. The Bible tells us of times when people were going through very difficult times and how they responded. In particular, we are told of the Israelites when they were journeying in the wilderness. And the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy 29 verse 5 that during the time in the wilderness, God tells them that I led you, that neither your clothes nor your sandals on your feet wore out. That you can imagine the children of Israel are journeying through the wilderness. And that God is telling them that for the time I led you, that your clothes and your shoes did not wear out. Isn't that an interesting God? God that we can trust in. We are also told in Exodus of a time when the Israelites were crossing the Red Sea. And we are told that they looked at the back and they saw the, the, the Egyptians' army coming. And they looked in front and they can see that there is a, a sea in front of them to cross. And the Bible tells us that they were afraid. The fear that comes when we do not know what to do, when the future looks bleak, when it looks that, they, they, that, that life is difficult, the Bible says that Moses looks at them and he tells them in Exodus 14, 13 and 14, he says, do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Today, as we think about our lives as families during these COVID times, probably we need to remind ourselves that our God is a God who led the Israelites in the wilderness and that their clothes did not wear out and their, their sandals also did not wear out. That it is our God who, when the Israelites were facing the Red Sea ahead of them and the enemies behind, that Moses told them that do not be afraid, stand still and see the salvation of our Lord. Today, as we think about this talk, we need to remind ourselves of our role as parents. We are hit hard because parents have a key role to play in the families. What are these five roles that I want to mention today that all begin with P? Roles that make us feel the weight, the burden, the challenge, even as we face this crisis. What are these roles that parents have? Number one is that we have the role of protection. We as parents 
are, are concerned so much about the well-being of our, of our families. And we, we, are, we are the ones who are hit hard. When, when trouble comes in, 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 in life, in our homes, it is the parents that first of all are hit because we have the role of protecting. And therefore, most people need to understand that when, when we go through issues in our lives, we are hit hard because we know at the back of our minds that we have a protecting role to think about the well-being of our families, our children, our everything in our homes. And therefore, as we face COVID, we are very much aware that we have a role to protect. Secondly, as parents, we have a role to provide. That we are there for people that know that there are things in the home that we need to provide. And therefore, as we face joblessness, as we face reduced income, as we face uncertainty of the future, we are affected and we do not know what to do. Yet, we are providers. And many times in life we believe as parents that our role is to provide money, food, clothing. But our role is beyond that. What are we there for providing or supposed to provide as parents? Number one, we are meant to provide covering. That when the people see the father in the home or the mom around, they know that there is protection and covering in this home. We are meant to provide wisdom. A time like this, people are looking at you as a parent, we as parents are saying, they want to see some direction, they want to see some wisdom. It is a time to provide friendship. We need friendships among ourselves. Our children need to see us as their friends. Yes, we are their parents, but beyond that, we need to be friends. Our spouses, yes, we are married to each other, but beyond that, God is saying, can we build friendship and provide friendship? We need to provide counsel. We need to provide advice. We need to provide insight. And therefore, as you think about our roles as parents, think beyond providing money. Think also of providing covering, wisdom, friendship, counsel, Advice, insight, think about these things. We are promoters. God, in his word, when he looked at Jesus, he says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with. You know, when we look at the people around us and we affirm them, and we assure them that indeed they are, they are worthy, they feel good, are we affirming each other at this time in our hope? Are we affirming our children? Are we affirming each other as spouses and telling each other, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased with? You know, affirmation is key in life and it can take you a long way. You know, sometimes probably in our, in our homes today, we are having issues because we are not affirming each other. Imagine that the world outside there is harsh and also in the house you come in and you find that the world in the house is also harsh. Where do you run to? Where? May we learn to promote, be promoters and affirm one another. But fourthly, as parents, we have the role of priests. A priest is the one who blesses. A priest is the one who prays. A priest is the one who will go to God on behalf of the people. That was the role of the priest, and that is the role of a priest even today. And therefore, in the homes, the father... And where the father is absent, the mother is the priest of the home. And therefore the question is, when problems come to you as parents, to we as parents, how do we handle them? Do we break down? Do we lose control? What do we do? As priests, we are reminded today that when problems come in our lives, we need to take them over to God. And therefore, as a parent, therefore, we're being reminded that, yes, the burden is heavy. The challenge is heavy. But how, therefore, do we develop the discipline of realizing that one of our roles as parents is being priests in the home and taking our problems over to God? Are we praying about these issues and telling the children 
and telling our, our spouses that we will take our problems over to God. But fifthly, as parents, we have the role of being prophets. Where the man is in the home, you are a prophet in that home. And where the man is not there, the woman must take over the role of the prophet. A prophet is the one who prophesies. A prophet is one who declares about the future. A prophet is the one who sees beyond here and sees into the future. At this particular moment in our lives, we must develop prophecy in our lives and begin to declare good upon the children that we have. Declare hope among those that we are, we are with. Declare that there's a, there's a future in terms of, of seeing things happening in a better way as we move into the future because God is calling us to be prophets. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 27 says, do not give the devil a foothold. Do not give the devil a foothold. Ephesians 4, verse 27. Because when you give the devil a foothold, the Bible says that he will be given a stronghold. That the devil will have a chance when he's given a little nafasi in your life. Today, there are four areas in which we need to be careful and not give the devil a foothold. What are these four areas that we're going to talk about today as we think about our times during this COVID period? Holding our families together when the world is falling apart. What are these four areas that you need to be careful about and not to allow the devil to come in and destroy your life or your family? Number one is your finances. Number two is your children. Number three is your marriage. And number four is your health. These four areas are critical in your life. Let us look at them very quickly. Number one, your finances. Isn't this an area that we are struggling with at the moment? All of us, we are struggling with the issue of finances. We are having pressure to do with our finances. And therefore, the COVID crisis did not just come as a health issue. No. It came as a health issue, but now it has moved on. And it has become a financial issue. And today many people are facing a financial crisis. I don't know whether you are in that situation in, in yourself, in your life. Probably there are those in our midst today who have lost their jobs. Are they there? Probably there are those in our midst today who have received major pay cuts. Probably there are those in our midst whose incomes have gone down because maybe you might be a landlord and the tenants are not paying. Probably you could be one that your business has not been doing well and that it has closed. Probably you could be the one that was paying a mortgage and now you don't know what to do. Probably you could be one that was having debts to pay and you cannot pay them. Probably the landlord is, is, is asking for rent and there are so many arrears that have filed. Probably you are looking into the future and you don't know what to do. Many people are now facing financial issues, unpaid bills, rent arrears, mortgages, school fees to pay, online classes going on, and you have to pay all these things. What do we do? Isn't this a challenge? We learned yesterday, I think it was yesterday, of a, of a principal of a high school who committed suicide. Did you hear about that? And people are now resorting to different er ways of dealing with their financial crisis. They don't know what to do. What do we do? As we face this crisis, remember that the devil wants to have a stronghold in the area of finances. Are you willing to be open and transparent to each other? Are you sharing your situation even with your children so that they can understand what you are going through? Are you sharing with your spouse of your financial issues? What are we doing? It has been said that a problem shared is a problem half solved, isn't it? I was worried about my daughter's school fees the other day because it's going to be a school fees, a big, a big amount of money. And my wife asked me, did the school call you? And then even before I answered, she told me, probably they called you and you didn't pick the phone. 
And she tells me, you know, I spoke to them and they say that the fees can be paid half. It can, you can continue with the exams and then the other half can be paid later. Didn't that solve my problem a little bit? Because rather than look for the whole amount of money, I can only pay only part of that amount. Because a problem, half sold, share, a problem shared is a problem that is partially shared. Don't keep your issues to yourself. Open up and share about them. But also with this regard to the issues about finances, dif differentiate between your, your needs and your wants. Many people have got so many wants. But we need to be careful and re realize that all the things that we need are not so all necessary in our lives. Some of them we can do without them. How therefore do we decide as a people, as a family, that we can be able to cut down and live according and live and, and meet our needs? You know, they say that you need to live on, on your means or by your means. But we don't want to tell you that you can live below your means some, at some point in your life. How do you differentiate between your needs and your wants? But also, as you settle, ch ch face your challenge of, of finances, learn to live one day at a time. Many people today are worried so much about the future. And you know, God tells us in his word that how many of you, if you worry about the future, can even add one day to your day, to your life? How many of us? Yes, it is true that we need to be concerned about the future, no problem. But many of us have been so much afraid about the future. We are worried about the future. But the Bible says, give us this day our daily bread. Praise God. That you can be able as a couple, as a family, as children together with your parents, pray and say the Lord Jesus taught us the Lord's prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Live one day at a time. Also learn to trust in God. Do we trust in God? Our children, do they know that we, we believe in God and that it is God who provides? Who do they know provides? For some of them, they know it is their mother who provides, don't they? For some of them, they know it is their dad who provides. For some of them, they know it is our parents who provide. Do they know that it is God who provides? Have you taught them that it is God who provides? Have you taught them that without God in your life, you are nothing? Teach them. Or learn as a family to trust in God and teach your children to trust in this God. God whom the Israelites trusted in and that he led them through the wilderness under their clothes and their sandals did not wear out. God who when they were crossing the Red Sea, they were afraid and yet God opened it up. Teach them to trust in God. Help your children understand that life is not always easy. Today we live in a world where people want quick things. Today we live in a world where people want quick answers. We live in a world where people want, they, 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 they imagine everything just happens. Let us understand that we don't live in a world that is smooth. Prepare our children for the future, a life that might not be always be easy, and teach them to prepare for tough times in their lives. It is an opportunity. As we face our financial issues, do you know what opportunities the government has for you? Some people were terminated the other day, and they realize that actually you can get something from your provident fund, from your pension savings. It is allowed by law. Do we know that that is a possibility? Do we know that we can be able, that some, some, some had, there are some hardship adjustments in terms of financial, uh, the financial world? Do we know that? Are we willing to revisit our budgets and adjust accordingly? What can we do? Are we willing to begin saving even for the future? How? 
And I think saving is an area where many people do not know how to handle it. And sometimes we want to save big money. But are we willing to save even the little money that we have and invest it? How can we do that? How are we managing our debt? Are we running away from the people that we owe? Or are we talking to them? How are we doing that? Are we protecting our credit scores? How are we doing it? Your finances. And therefore, one of the areas that is critical in your life today as, a, as families is your finances. Be open and talk about this as a family. Don't crash down because as you share, there will be an, a little answer that will help you go a long way. Secondly, your children. That's another area of concern, isn't it? Your children. In the Bible, we, we have a few examples, let me just mention two, of people that were con so concerned with their children. The first case is mentioned in 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 28 to 30. 2 Kings 6, 28 to 30. It's about the siege of Samaria. We are told at that time, a donkey's head was going for about, if you convert into Kenya shillings, about 5,000 shillings. The king meets a woman, and the woman says that they are having a quarrel with another woman. And they are saying that this woman, we agree that we will kill our child today and eat because we ate out my child yesterday and she's refusing. You can imagine to the level of people eating their children. Another story is about the woman of Zarephath. When the prophet goes to her and she says, I have only a handful of flour and a little oil. Only left for me and my child and after that we will die. Many parents are very concerned with their children. They go to work because of their children. They open businesses because of their children. They, they are concerned. They want to provide for their children. They want to do all these things. Today, children are also having issues, aren't they? Our children, as they face school closure, as they themselves are supposed to social distance, when they are not seeing their friends, whom they always interact with, even them, they're in trouble, aren't they? They are. They are feeling isolated. They are feeling anxious. Some of them are bored. Others are uncertain about the future. And they are, they are probably they are filled with fear and grief. Is anybody talking to them? You know, sometimes you are concerned about ourselves as parents, our problems. But is anybody concerned that the children that we have in our homes are also feeling isolated? Does anybody, is anybody concerned that they are anxious, that they are bored, to some extent, some of them, that they are uncertain and afraid about the future? It is possible, and it is the case. And we are reminding ourselves that we need to talk to our children and realize that all these things are happening in their lives. A few things to mention as we think about children. Number one is that we can spend time with them. We need to spend time with them. Children want to spend time with us, don't they? They do. And there are things you can do with them. Sitting with them to watch a movie. <laughs> My son forced me the other day to watch a movie with him. Not forced in a bad way, but he was pushing me, let's watch this movie, and we watched it until late that night. I watched the match between... Uh, what's these guys between uh, PSG and uh, and uh, what do you, what do you call them? These other guys of German, the Germany team. Yes, Bayern. And I watched the whole the whole night, and it was late. Eh? And I was sitting there with my son, enjoying the football, watching one goal after after, after another goal. And was it on a Saturday? And I think I was pitching the next day. <laughs> Can't remember which when it was. But enjoying the football match. And I'm sure my son too was enjoying watching this match. 
I'm enjoying time with my children also. Today in our house, I mean our house, we are, we are defining supper and dinner. I don't know that those are two different things, but it's a joke in our house. And today I'll be having dinner. Yesterday I had supper. <laughs> and dinner for, for the, my daughter was, was telling us, Dad, for you, dinner is when we'll sit on the dining table. <laughs> and she, she, will, she will create some coarse meal. She, will, she designs a little funny course. And for her, she's calling that dinner. But the important thing here is that we are trying to spend time with each other. How can you create time to spend time with the children? When you spend time with children, they feel loved. And they feel secure. And also, they feel that they are important. And parents, as this time of COVID, when our children are at home, when they are, to some extent, the way we said idle, not so idle, but they are doing other things, can we make them feel loved, secure, and also important? And therefore, spend time with the children. But also be positive. You know, many times in life, we are not positive. For example, if you tell your child, stop doing that. That is being negative, is it? Stop doing that. People want to be told, children want to, you can help your children by telling them what to do. Giving them positive instructions rather than negative instructions of stop doing that. Why are you doing that? But be positive and make them be involved in that way. Be positive with them. Help them to connect with their friends. How can the children be apart from each other for that long? How do you help them connect with each other with their friends? Our children. What else can we do with our children? Be structured. Get them to be structured in their lives. COVID came in and it disrupted everything. It disrupted work, home, Routines at school and those, all those kind of things. But you as a parent, you can create new routines with your children. As you do that schedule, involve them. Yes, so that when they participate in doing a schedule, they can own it and feel that I am involved in creating this schedule. How can you do that as a parent? Help them to plan this schedule and even create some free time in this schedule. Include even time to exercise and do other things. Let them use their energy that they have so they can be able to participate in something that is structured. When they are structured in a particular way, then they do it in a, in, in, in a, in a particular framework with particular boundaries and they are able to be able to be involved in a better way. Make a structure for them. But remember I said, involve them in this structure, isn't it? So the children can feel that I have been involved to some extent. Something else, as we talk about children, is not only creating time with them, not only getting them in a structure, but also something about bad behavior. All our children misbehave at some, to some extent, don't they? They misbehave. All our children, to some extent, misbehave. This is normal when our children are tired. It's normal. When they are tired, when they are hungry, when they are afraid, and even when they are trying to learn independence. When kujaribu kidogo, sometimes, eh? They test. When kupima nguvu, eh? Or they kupima akili, which is which? They try to test you, 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 you a little bit. And they want to know how you'll respond. And therefore, all our children, to some extent, do a few things that don't make us happy. Bad behavior. But as you think about our children, you spend time with them, catch that bad behavior when it is still early. Unaishika mapema, sindio? And redirect it. Redirect your kids to good behavior. That when you, you catch the bad behavior, when it is still early, 
you have therefore the ability or the, the time to redirect it so that you are the, to, into good behavior. And in that case, you are, you are going to stop it even before it starts. And therefore, look, spend time with the children and see what is happening. And if there's anything that you think is not in the right direction, you are able to nip it and direct it in the right way. Another thing as we think about our children, keep calm and manage the stress. Keep calm. Be calm. Sometimes you might overreact. Is it possible to overreact? Yes. When you are tested, when you have stresses you are carrying, you can overreact. But be calm. Leadership, in leadership, it is important to be calm, to be level-minded. There are times when you are tested, and a good leader will remain calm even during big storms, when your leadership is tested. Talk about COVID with your children. Talk about it. Don't be silent, but talk about COVID with your children. And for this evening, what are we talking about? We are saying that as we face COVID, your finances are critical. Your children are a concern also to you. Another third thing is about your marriage. I began with finances because to some extent finances are a big issue. We are all concerned with that. And then I began with children because parents are concerned with their children. And the third thing is your marriage. For those who are married, your marriage is a concern too right now. We are hearing cases of domestic violence. We are hearing cases of marriage breaking up. We are hearing cases of separations. And we are hearing all these things. Your marriage is critical. When we say that do not give the devil a foothold, one of the areas that you are likely, we are likely to have issues is in marriage. Because the devil, during times of crisis, he wants to destroy our marriages. What therefore do we do? Three things. Number one, guard your marriage. Try your best. Try. Guard your marriage. Hinder it from the attacks of the enemy. Guard it. Number two, build your marriage. What, how, in what ways can you decide to build that marriage now? Are there things you can do together to build that marriage? What is it that you can do to build your marriage? Number three, mend it. Are there areas in your life that you need to, to, to reconcile and, and rebuild and reconnect? At this particular time in life, issues that were hidden are now emerging, probably. They are emerging. If there was something that you are struggling with as a couple, that this particular time of COVID, it is likely to begin to come up. And the devil now comes in with a problem that was not there now, but was hidden. Do not give the devil a foothold. Ecclesiastic chapter 4 verse 12 says, Though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A cord of three strands is not quickly broken. Two can defend themselves. Your marriage is important. You are stronger when you are together united. But you are more stronger when God is in your life. A cord of three strands cannot easily be broken. And therefore, as a marriage, as a couple, are you developing your relationship with God? Because when God is in your life, 
even your marriage will be strong. When God is in your life, you will be accountable to him. When God is in your life, you will tell him your problems. When God is in your life, you will submit to one another as to the Lord because your fear, the fear of the Lord is in your lives. God, your marriage. Are there issues you're struggling with at the moment? Are there issues that the devil is bringing about? Sit down and talk about those issues and guard your marriage. But finally, it is not only about your finances. It is not only about your children. It is not only about your marriage, but also it is about your health. Your health matters. And especially I want to talk about your mental health, which is a long subject that somebody will discuss another day. But your mental health, many people today are breaking down. And I said earlier that there's domestic violence, there's suicide, accidents. For the last few days when I'm driving on the road, going at home in the evening, I found accidents on the road. Yesterday I found an accident and the policeman spoke to me and told me this pro box is like it was flying. And I think there were two people that were dead. The other week I found somebody knocked and was lying on the road. Another week I saw another case on the road. Accidents. And probably at the back of all this is that people are stressed and that their mental health is being affected. Think about your life. Yes, physically we are afraid of COVID. But beyond that, think about your mental health. What are you doing to protect your mental health of yourself and also your children? We shall be having a talk very soon on parenting still, but looking at mental health and asking ourselves, how do we protect ourselves? Rather than, rather than break down and fight each other, rather than break down and turn to suicide, rather than break down and even have accidents, what can we do to protect ourselves? I want to conclude by saying that all is not lost. Where there is crisis, there is also opportunity. And I finish with a story of this woman. A woman who was fired one day in her life, not during these COVID times, but before that. And therefore she lost her job during a, a, a recession time. This woman was a single mom. And she is looking at life and she was saying that all is lost. And she goes to her church and she tells her pastor that Reverend, I have lost my job. Nobody there knew, thought they could, they could sympathize with me. I, have, I am a single mother. I, I don't know what to do. I have children to care for. I am a widow. And she defended us and said, but nobody at my workplace looked at all these things. I have been terminated. And the pastor looked at her and told her, prophesied in her life, and said, that we've been to your house many times. And every time we've come to your house, you make very good cookies and cakes. And he asked the lady, how many times do you use your oven? And she says, I use my oven only once in a week. And the pastor told her that from today, henceforth, I want you to use your oven every day of the week and not only once. And then he told her something else. I want you to go and make cookies and go to where you are working. And he asked her, how many staff did you, how many staff were there employed there? She says 500. And then he tells her, I want you to make cookies. Were you given any money of when you are, you are, you are retrenched? Yes. And the pastor told her, go and use that money to buy flour, to buy oil, to buy 
margarine to buy this and this, whatever you used for baking, and go and make cookies. And don't go and sell them. Go and give them free. And therefore this woman made all this. She obeyed the person. She went and made those cookies. And she goes to her place of work. And the, 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 the CEO looks, sees her coming and she, he imagines she has come to complain or she has taken, maybe she has sued us, you never know. And the other workmates look and say maybe she has come to borrow money. And the others look and say maybe, maybe, maybe. But the woman comes and says, she says, I want to see the CEO and she says, I've come here to say thank you. Thank you for giving me a chance to work in this place. Thank you for the years that I worked here and for being a good boss. She went to her fellow workmates and said, thank you for being workmates with me in this place. And she said, and she had packed gifts for them, cookies for each one of them. That, and on the top it was written, thank you, thank you, thank you. Rather than her going with a complaining spirit, she went with a spirit of appreciation, a spirit of love, a spirit of joy. And from that day onwards, the people began to give her orders. And one of them will say, me, I want you to be supplying me with cookies for this. I want you to be supplying me with this. I want you to be supplying me with this. She has employed people. Rather than being employed, she is now an employer. Rather than depending on that paycheck, she is now the one giving people paychecks. All is not lost. And for families, as we sit there, times are indeed hard. But don't give up. Because all is not lost. Maybe God is beginning something new in our lives. You never know. God might be doing something new in your life. And that God is going to make you be greater as a family. And therefore in your areas of your family, finances, don't give the devil a chance. In your children, don't give the devil a chance. In your marriage, don't give the devil a chance. In your health, don't give the devil a chance. The God of heaven, God who led the Israelites in the wilderness, and their clothes did not wear out, and their sandals did not wear out. God who made them cross the Red Sea when the enemies were behind and also ahead. May this God journey with you and give you success in your life. That it is possible for us to stand firm that we can hold the family together when the world is falling apart. Let us pray. Father in heaven, look upon all families in their struggles, O oh God. The families where the breadwinners have lost their jobs and they are full of fear in their lives and certainty. May you have mercy upon them and open doors for them. The families that are strained and probably their relationships are not working, that God will give them the strength and the ability to reconcile. The families where children are broken, that God, the children, will be protected of you and they will stand firm as the children of God. The families where they are losing hope that will remind them that all is not lost because God, you will do something great in their lives. And therefore, Lord, I pray that Heavenly Father, you God who is in heaven, God who is able, God who is powerful, God who is mighty, that you will do something in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Canon for that uh, powerful uh, talk. We are all going through a tough situation. And thank you for allowing God to use you that powerfully. And we thank God that you had uh, time to share that talk with us. May God bless you. God bless each and every one of us. Soon and very soon, we are doing another talk. So may God bless you and continue keeping you safe. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Thank you.